Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today, we're once again talking with Dr. Neil Blitz. Dr. Blitz is the Chief of Foot Surgery at Bronx Lebanon Hospital in New York. The office for his private practice is located at 56 and Park Avenue in Manhattan. Dr. Blitz completed training at Swedish Hospital in Seattle, Washington. From there, he completed an Acta Orthopedica Fellowship in Dresden, Germany. Dr. Blitz is a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post in the area of foot health and has authored numerous articles in the peer-reviewed literature. Dr. Blitz, thank you for joining us today on eOrthopod TV Remote. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Blitz, today we will be talking about plantar plate tears in the foot. Can you begin by describing a bit about this structure in the foot called the plantar plate? The plantar plate is a ligament that's located on the ball of the foot, located right beneath the second toe. Now every toe it's, has a plantar plate associated with it, but most commonly people injure or tear the plantar plate of the second toe. Again, it's located on the ball of the foot, right beneath the second toe, which would be right here if this were your foot. Now. Uh, when the plantar plate itself ruptures, it causes a condition called a hammer toe, which is a buckled toe, and that toe in and of itself could be painful both on the top of the toe and also on the ball of the foot. And that pain uh, could cause swelling, inflammation, and also when the toe becomes uh, buckled, it can cause calluses and corns on the top and the, and the bottom of the foot. Some people develop a plantar plate uh, from a traumatic injury such as a misstep or spraining their toe. Other people, however, develop uh, plantar plate injuries because they have an associated bunion uh, or a, a bunion on their foot and the bunion puts pressure on the second toe region and that causes the ligament to rupture over time. Now that's more common than a traumatic injury. What type of symptoms does a plantar plate tear cause? So the symptoms of a plantar plate rupture vary. Uh, for the most part, it can cause a lot of pain and swelling in the ball of the foot. Now, when you have an advanced uh, rupture of the plantar plate or more of a chronic problem, you can get uh, definitely a lot of inflammation, but you also can get a deformity of the toe where the toe becomes buckled again, or it becomes buckled. And that in and of itself can cause problems because the toe can rub up against the shoe and uh, co cause corns and calluses. When you evaluate a patient that you suspect has a plantar plate tear, how do you begin this process? When I evaluate patients with a suspected plantar plate tear, the first thing that I do is look at them clinically. And what does that mean? I look at the foot, I evaluate the toe to see if it's just in general in the right position. Sometimes um, a chronic plantar plate tear can, can result in the toe being pushed over or cross over another toe. Um, so that's the first thing, just how it looks in general. The second thing that we do clinically is we evaluate the stability of the toe and there's a special test where we pull on the toe and we sort of maneuver the toe and we see if the toe is unstable. Do you normally order any specialized tests such as an MRI? When it comes to diagnosing a plantar plate tear, there is of course the clinical aspect of it and there's also the radiographic aspect. So typically we order x-rays just to see the overall structure of the foot um, and to see if there's a, a bunion that's present, the alignment of the bones. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we do a lot of times is after the clinical exam is, is we'll think about it an additional study. Now most commonly an MRI is ordered because that evaluates for soft tissue but the problem with MRI it's, it's difficult to sometimes tell uh, the, uh, the plantar plate structure itself when it's torn because uh, the, the MRI can't see that much detail but sometimes it can. It can tell you if there's a frank rupture but it's the, the smaller tears that are more difficult. In that situation what I often recommend is something called an arthrogram. And what an orthogram is, is a, uh, it's a semi-invasive procedure where a needle is inserted into the joint with radiographic dye, and then we fill up the joint with this radiographic fluid, and we see what leaks out. So if any fluid leaks out of the joint, which is a closed space, that tells us that the plantar plate is ruptured. And this is done under live x-ray. When you have finished your diagnostic workup and suspect that the patient has a plantar plate tear, what are your initial recommendations for treatment? Once I'm sure a patient has a plantar plate tear, I first have to decide on how severe I think the plantar plate tear is. Now, when you have really severe plantar plate tears in, in a chronic situation, that's treated very differently than an acute plantar plate tear. We'll start off with, with the treatment recommendations for acute tears. Acute tears, the toe itself is not deformed. There's no hammer toe. Uh, the, the ligament was ruptured on the bottom of the foot. 
There we go ahead and we tape the toe and we put a patient in a cast or a walking boot or something to try to let the ligament heal. On the other hand, when you have patients with a chronic tear, the toe itself can be deformed and be hammered and, and have what's called a hammer toe, uh, which I discussed before. In that situation, you're really not going to, to be able to reverse the tear because it's already torn and you're not going to be able to let it heal because it's already too stretched out. Do you recommend any type of orthotics or special shoes as a part of the conservative treatment of plantar plate tears? Patients with plantar plate tears that are chronic in nature can definitely benefit from a, a trial of orthotics. And what you want to do is you want to take pressure off the ball of the foot and uh, really stabilize the arch so that the foot is functioning in a better position. Now if there is an associated hammer toe, it's hard to say if the, the orthotics will be able to cure the hammer toe because they really won't, but they may be able to cure the pain associated with that, that hammer toe. How long will you continue conservative treatment before considering surgical options? You know, we always try conservative treatment before we consider surgery. Now in an acute tear where the ligament itself is ruptured in a very short period of time and there's no problems with the toe being deformed, there we'll go ahead and put somebody in a cast uh, for about six weeks to, to, to 12 weeks depending on the, on the severity of, of the injury. But these ligaments usually heal in about eight weeks in general. Uh, especially if you're off of it. Now, if you have a chronic tear, you know, we'll try the conservative treatment for about three to six months, uh, depending on uh, the tear itself and the, the structure of the foot. And when do you consider conservative treatment a failure? I consider conservative treatment a failed if we've tried, again, some period of, of, of immobilization, orthotics, or taping for about six weeks to three months, and if a patient still has pain, then I'll consider doing uh, surgery. Can you describe the situations where you would consider surgical options? Plantar plate tears in general can be very difficult to heal, and part of the reason for that is the plantar plate is a thick ligament that doesn't itself have a lot of blood supply, so they often go on to some sort of uh, a surgical intervention, if not in the short term, in the long term. Uh, that's just the nature of the injury. Now, I will consider surgery if the toe is uh, highly unstable uh, and there is an associated bunion with that, with that toe, um, then I'll often recommend fixing the bunion and fixing the, the uh, plantar plate tear at the same time. Now, I often will recommend surgery for acute tears if the toe is grossly unstable or just very unstable. Can you describe your approach to the surgical treatment of plantar plate tears? The surgical treatment for plantar plate tears can be done a variety of ways. It can either be done approached from the top of the foot or the bottom of the foot. Now remember, a plantar plate tear is located on the bottom of the foot. I typically recommend to my patients that um, the plantar plate be directly visualized, so I recommend coming in from the bottom where an incision is made on the bottom of the foot and we repair the plantar plate directly. I'm able to visualize everything. That's typically what I recommend because each plantar plate tear is different. Some are really small and some can be very large and, and um, complex. So it's good to visualize that directly. Sometimes the plantar plate can also be repaired from the top. Now this is, at least in my opinion, best done if you're having other work done on the top of the foot because the, the, the bones sometimes need to be shortened to get to that plantar plate. But the good news is when you have that approach done, a lot of times um, you've got a particular structural problem of the foot and those bones need to be shortened anyway so you can access that plantar plate. Uh, what should I expect after surgery? For example, will I be going home the same day? Will I be on crutches or have other restrictions? Plantar plate surgery is generally outpatient surgery, which means you go home the same day. Typically, when the plantar plate is fixed, patients go home with crutches and a cast. And the reason for that is the plantar plate is a very delicate structure on the bottom of the foot. So if, you're, uh, if you walk on the foot after the surgery, the, the repair itself can, can rip again. How long does it normally take to completely recover from this type of surgery? It takes about six to eight weeks for the ligament itself to heal, and then probably about three months for physical therapy and for the toe to become strong. So I would say it's usually about three months before you're kind of running around again uh, pretty comfortably. 
we should probably talk a bit about complications. What are the most common complications that you worry about as a surgeon performing these procedures? From a surgical standpoint, the complications that I am most concerned about is re-rupture of the plantar plate. And that's not necessarily a complication, but it's a possibility uh, in the future. So, which is why we pay specific attention to keeping the patients off their foot after the surgery to allow the plantar plate to heal and give it uh, as much time as possible. Dr. Blitz, this has been an excellent discussion on plantar plate tears. As we close this discussion, is there anything that you feel patients should know that we have failed to discuss up to this point? When it comes to plantar plate tears, I recommend that most patients do their research. Now, the main thing with plantar plate tears is that patients get focused on the plantar plate tear itself, and they forget about the problems that cause the plantar plate tear in the first place. So if you have an associated bunion in, in that same foot, that likely had a lot to do with the plantar plate problem. So I usually recommend that you fix that problem at the same time. Again, every foot is different, but that's my, my sort of, uh, my, my, uh, the, the best advice that I can give anybody that's thinking about plantar plate surgery. Dr. Blitz, I want to thank you for joining us here on eOrthopod TV Remote. I look forward to further discussions concerning reconstructive surgery of the foot in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.